Beverly Hills, a city with an international reputation. Beverly Hills belongs to the world. It is known worldwide. But for many, Beverly Hills is more than 90210. It's home. I've lived here for 35 years. Since 1971, so it's 37 years. 64 years. 47 years. About 23 years. I've lived in my house for, um, since 16 years. I've lived here for six years. We've lived here since 1957. Almost 38 years, for 37 years. As home, residents say the city has a unique charm. We have uh, the wonderful apartment area of our city, and we have the marvelous mansions of our city, and we have the wonderful flats north of Santa Monica. People don't come to Beverly Hills, you know, to, to see the big skyscrapers or to see, you know, the buildings and the construction. They come so that they can see the sun and the wide open streets. I love the villagey look of Beverly Hills, and I really like sitting out in a little cafe and looking across the street and being able to see the blue sky. Now, the very heart of 90210 is threatened. It all began in city chambers in 2007. A developer brought a plan to expand the Hilton Hotel before the Beverly Hills Planning Commission. We had seven months of hearings. In those seven months, we studied thousands of pages of documents. We heard testimony from citizens, from the applicant, from staff, from experts. And that's how we were definite in our position that this is not the right project for this site. It's too big, it's too much, it doesn't provide for the community. The developer appealed the decision before the Beverly Hills City Council. There was a lot of lobbyists involved, many of them who were former mayors. There was a lot of pressure put on by the developer and by certain members of this community who are very influential to get this development where it is. In a three to two decision, the council greenlit the expansion of the Hilton. I didn't think it was right for a few people on the city council to vote and to say, yes, we want this expansion here, and the residents didn't get a chance to have their say. Suddenly, plans were in the works to construct high-rise towers on the triangle of land between Wilshire and Santa Monica Boulevard. You're talking about a mega project. There are three towers planned, 18 stories, 12 stories and eight stories. The planned towers far exceeded the 45-foot height limit. We've never in the city ever had an 18-story building. What we're talking about is a building like they build on Wisher Boulevard in Westwood. And that, I think, is very inappropriate because this uh, is too high. This is the rendering of the Waldorf Astoria that's on the website and that you've seen in many of the pictures and the advertisements. This shows the building cut off and cropped. If you were to actually take this building and show the entire building, this is what you get. Quite a big different story than this small, innocent little picture. If completed, the Hilton will boast the tallest building in Beverly Hills and will sit at the busiest intersection. We are taking the fourth worst intersection in the United States, adding more lanes, making it more complex, putting construction there for the next five years. Worse, the planned expansion will take place across the street from an elementary school. I don't think it's right that kids play on a field where there's cement trucks and pile drivers and cranes overhead. The project is going to go on for many, many years, probably many more years than what's being anticipated. And we're concerned about the impact that all the dust that's going to be created and the pollution from this construction can have. In fact, unknown airborne pollutants may pose a health risk to El Rodeo students. What's going to happen? Are they going to dome the fields? Are kids still going to have physical education at El Rodeo? The developer has promised $1.6 million in mitigation fees. But some members of the school board worry that this amount will not be enough. Then the school district will be on the hook for additional expenses. 
We're going to do everything in our power as a school district and as a school board to ensure the health and safety of their students. That may mean that we have to dip into the general fund. And in so doing, we would be taking money out of the classroom and putting it into these mitigation measures to ensure the health and welfare of their students. Parking presents another challenge. In an unprecedented move, the city council waived the hotel's requirement to provide parking for its employees. If you don't provide free parking, I'll tell you what happens. Number one, they will go park on our residential streets. The Hilton Complex will be short over 1,000 parking spaces. Overflow cars will spill out onto residential streets. Since I have been on the Planning Commission, we have never allowed a business to go in without providing employee parking. It will only be a place for developers to make money, and that will destroy the character of life in our city forever. The code exists to keep Beverly Hills as a low-rise community. Don't build, don't expand, don't make gigantic, overdevelopment-sized condominiums, and then try and sell it to us as a revitalization. I know we're smarter than this. I know that when we will be driving down our streets and we look up in the sky, we're gonna look up and say, what do I want? What do I want for my family and for generations to come? It's better than what we're getting. Now, many Beverly Hills residents think 90210 is in danger. Make no mistake about it. The boundless greed and sense of entitlement that has set the pace and kind of development in our city is the exact same kind of boundless greed and sense of entitlement that we have seen on Wall Street and that has caused our country to teeter on the brink of a financial disaster. The people who are yes on edge are the people who are thinking about making extra money, making money, and they don't care about the city of Beverly Hills. You cannot double the size of a building and reduce traffic at the same time. That's, that's a joke. Once it's built, it is forever. And if we've made a mistake, it's going to be a very big one. The Beverly Hills Courier and its owner, Cliff Smith, who is not a Beverly Hills resident, support the expansion of the Hilton, one of the paper's top advertisers. The Courier often publishes one-sided pro-Hilton articles, including scare tactic suggestions that city services will be cut if the Hilton expansion is not passed. In fact, the city council has no plans to cut services. City treasurer Elliot Finkel says there are over $450 million in our reserves and general fund, and that in stark contrast to the nation, our city is financially stronger than ever. If this should pass, the developers are all lined up. Beverly Hills is now wide open to the developer with the deepest pockets who can buy lobbyists and residents in the city. If, if this project is defeated at the polls, it sends a clear, loud message to the city council and the governing authorities that this community does not want to continue on the path that we're going, which is higher and higher and denser and denser in the commercial zone. Despite imitation mailers claiming the contrary, the Los Angeles Democratic Party urges a no vote on Measure H. Their genuine mailer looks like this, and you can see the endorsement yourself at www.lacdp.org slash endorsements. If this goes through, believe me, it's not going to be good. you got to vote no on it. I'm voting no on Measure H because I really don't think this mega development really fits into the idea of why we moved to Beverly Hills. We're not a city that has ever been bought and sold. We stand on our own. We know what we want. We know who we are. I very much encourage residents to vote no on H. Save our city.